Hello again. Let's go look closer on some render options what we have in Vue application. So to access those options, we can go from the top bar and we can go to select render options. We also can just go inside of the toolbar top bar right here and right click. And this is will open render options. So we can access multiple ways. In render options, you notice we have a different areas. So first is a preset render quality. And we'll look at this in a second. Below we have it rendered. We can specify where we want to render internal external network. So we'll look on this ones. We also have the render destinations. It is where we want to preview. For example, we can go directly to the camera screen or render directly to the disk. Well, again, we'll look a little bit later. Next, we have the render what we want. So we can select any type of the render specify areas. We have the render quality. Some of those properties you can see the kind of gray out. And the reason is why it's based on our presets. So some, some of presets is allowed us to modify. Some, for example, user settings will allow us to change all of them. Okay, so let's go ahead. Below this, you'll notice we have it in same and render quality, a little bit additional properties for anti-aliasing, direct, indirect lighting, and other ones. On our far, far right side, we have it our resolutions preset, all the sizes, so we can specify and make very fast um, additions. We also have it additional options below, which allowed us to create panoramic render and stereoscopic images. So if you are one who want to create like a sky boxes or other things for the video games, this is area where we're going to use. And next below, we have it also just specify if we need a specifically render area. And surprise that this is actually quite a bit useful. For example, I found out when I have an image and I need render maybe like 10 meters by 10 meters, 150 DPI, it's become very large area to render. And uh, in Vue, sometimes a bit harder to handle with memory much easier if you separate your render areas and render by blocks and after put them together. So below we also have memory optimizations. In this case, it can open, uh, clear some settings inside the memory, flush it so you have it more memory and no artifacts or other things may relate to video card will be uh, staying there. And below we have some notification box. This is purely just make a noise when render is complete. Okay, and of course our button. So right now, let's go ahead and look a little bit closer on these presets before we're going forward. So notice in a um, presets render quality, this is going from the fastest, but again, not necessarily the best quality and down to even user settings where we can go all the way crazy and pop up maximum quality. But of course, remember, as we're going from top to bottom, there's some render times will increase in most cases. So, of course, if I'm going from preview and going to ultra on some cases like water and other things, a render will be significantly longer. But the quality again of render will be best. And our quality is based because when we generate it, it's need to trace it to particle of the light, how it will interact with the object that's emitted or with a cloud atmospheric effect and other things. So to make a very realistic look, it's actually simulating very well the natural world. And because of that, it does take time to render. Okay, the first, if you look, let's have an OpenGL. In OpenGL, it is software or hardware based on your settings, um, basic render. And it is, if you hardware, it will based on your video card and drivers or in a software in many cases. It is will provide the fastest render, but again, it's not necessarily will be accurate if you have it gaussic, if you have it uh, translucity or other things, it's not necessarily will be the best. And OpenGL also provide for us some editing of the options. And right here, it's a very simple bar. It's just going faster or better. So you can try play around. The below this is have a preview. Preview, it's probably one of the common render settings when you do a work in progress. For example, when I set up my terrain, I placed elements, objects, and whatever I needed, and I will use a preview to see the positioning and everything. However, you need to understand with a preview, for example, if you're using alpha maps, if you use the um, other ones, and you're using transparency, alpha transparency, in a preview mode, this won't be rendered. So for example, if your tree have it leaves that using alpha transparency around, they will look like a squares. 
Same if you have the alpha map and you just set up and the transparency won't be going through. As well, some other elements like uh, import maybe animations from Poser won't be necessarily working in that time because the preview mode is well the cheapest, fastest, simplest things and render. Think about this, this is a working render, work in progress. So below this, we actually have a final. And you notice as I'm changing from preview to final, some options open and right here, advanced effect settings is modified as well. So we're going to 46 quality from 16. It's a big jump. Just example, if we're going from fire to spear, you can see just a little bit increasing. And again, when we go to user, we look a little bit closer. What is all of this advanced effect quality does for us? But let's go back to our final. In a final, we also will render, um, now alpha transparency will render properly. Also reflections, um, uh, rays when we're passing in, many other options now, it's uh, actual production quality. So you can render in a final and have it a very nice image. And many times actually when I render, I'm just using final render. Because in many cases, it's a very good quality and it's provide all necessary um, render quality for me and render options. Uh, one difference between final and broadcast, and you can notice right here, it says enable motion blur. So if I do animations, I will go in a broadcast quality because it's mostly does not even change any quality, anything. It just enable this motion blur option. So it's a, have this kind of trail, more natural look for my animation. Most of the time you don't want to use this in a still image, except if you want to pass the special speed kind of looking. But one thing notice, it is only work motion blur or blurring on a motion that does not do anything to blur reflection, transparency or depth of field. If we go again to the final, you can see those things still be checked in. So if I want to create a very depth of field kind of macro, probably final will still work just good for me. Okay, next below broadcast, we have a superior quality. Notice what's happened right here. Now we increase our to going faster and better. Again, from final right here, we'll go superior. We still have it options if you want to apply motion blur. So if you want to do this for animations as well, but mostly our better and faster quality just increasing. And of course, if we're going to ultra, the next it's a jump even more. So it's increase the quality higher and higher. But doing this will paying with the price. It will be much longer take to render some images. Okay, next is new path tracer. And this is was added in recent release of the Vue and it's new way to render. It's work actually quite a bit fast and provide a very good result. And the reason why it does this, let's enable that one. Um, before actually we're going to this, I want to pop up this note and just notify us that notice right here that some feature not supported in by tracer render engine. For example, procedures material. Okay, so they will be removed. Um, in this case, it was also introduced same time with this one. It's PBR. It's a, a physical based materials which allowed create a very realistic look and also image based. So this way you will need to be sure if you use the path tracer, you switch your textures to different type. Okay, let's go click OK. And one thing what I want to do is click on Edit. Notice right here we have the more options for Path Tracer. Uh, top one, and I can say it's probably best that we go and can work on this and look how it work. But overall, it's a quality a lot of simple um, maximum sample per image, maximum render time we can set here, minimum quality threshold, which is kind of nice. And by disabling, but still using those default values, we also have it. Um, physically accurate Gauss stick that we can enable if we need it. Again, this is two physical accurate Gauss stick and most important render of VU Spectra Clouds that will use a little bit more internal render to provide this in VU. However, by default is disabled and render VU Spectra Cloud by default is enabled. So when you create clouds, the VU will use its own engine to calculate them and show it properly. The most important for this is right here on the bottom when it says OpenCL usage. And notice right here it says use all available devices by default. For example, many video cards right now, they have a GPU um, or processor located in a hardware on the video card, which can take some 
a workload of the CPU and the render. And I, I don't know how many GPUs I have on mine. It's over a thousand on my video card. So and of course, when I want to render, I want to use them because I have a 16 core virtual on my processor. And if I add thousand something other cores, it's probably will work quite a bit faster. So right here, you can see it's covered properties. I can use all available devices. It's meaning GPU and CPU, or you can just specify. So in this case, if you think you can do some other um, effect, some other render, you may just use only GPU. So it's loaded on your card and you continue working CPU with node load. So it just give you all this flexibility, but most time probably used all devices will work well. Okay. Let's go click. Okay. And we will go later to all these properties, just create a simple scenery and just compare how much it will be different in speed rendered on all of them. Okay. And we'll look one below last is user settings and notice as I check this, all options is available. So this way I have a full access to all the properties that can modify. So I can go and modify my quality. If I can go, go very crazy on this or go jump directly in the settings and we'll look on them a little bit later. So then I can go and modify the nice things about also user settings that allowed us to save or load it those settings. So if I go inside and I optimize my render settings just for my scenery with the best quality that work for this, I can actually save this. And in the future, when I'm going to render, I can preload my settings on render, load it and render in new scenery. Okay. So this is kind of fast overview. Let's go just for, uh, try to go over them in next tutorials and see how long this will take to render and what's different will be.